All right, here we go. We're going to do uh, another kind of relay video. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about some uh, heat strip controls. Um, there's a, a lot of common components that we use for heat strips. Um, probably the more famous one is going to be our sequencer. Um, so here we just have a, uh, a single stack sequencer. It's got two switches. The top switch brings on the first heat strip. Uh, if you have two, you can wire it you know, through the, the second switch there. So top switch, then your second switch, and then down here at the bottom is your 24 volt connections. Uh, that's 24 volts AC, okay? Uh, but it's just a standard, uh, standard uh, sequencer, nothing special. Um, if you've been dealing with train or even some Goodman components um, here in the past couple years or so, they started using contactors. So uh, with the contactor, we have, you know, this in, in this case is a two pole. So I can have two heat strips um, running through this or depending on the size, you could run one heat strip, you know, hot side through here, then return side back. Different ways to wire this depending on manufacturer, but uh, contactors are commonly used um, to turn on heat strips, you know, therefore they're heavy duty loads. And of course they are also 24 volts AC uh, on the coil. Uh, but what I wanted to show you is uh, I've been getting some questions on a DC style uh, heat sequencers or heat relays. Uh, and here's one, um, you can see all the, all the pretty black stuff. Somebody has smoked this thing, okay, uh, literally. And uh, this came out of a carrier family unit. Um, I think it was actually a Bryant, but um, it, nonetheless, right? Doesn't matter. Uh, but this is a DC relay. Uh, if you look here to the side, I mean, it'll tell you, uh, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, uh, but uh, it's a DC coil that operates this relay. Um, and we actually have, um, on some of them, you know, you're gonna have, uh, in this case, you've got like a little chip all right, um, where this W1 is, you'll have, you've got these two little, two little prongs here, uh, but there's a Molex plug, a little white plug. It's got two wires, usually an orange and a purple, but it brings 24 volts here. And then these outer two pieces um, is actually what slides over your DC coil terminals, the male terminals, the, the male posts that they stick up. Um, but it's basically, a, you know, a, a rectifier. It, uh, it, it turns AC into DC. So um, that's one of them carrier uses. If you see it uh, on top of uh, this particular style of heat relay, uh, it's nothing fancy, still treat it the same. A lot of guys out in the field, they, they still try to go left to right across uh, this relay that you find in the carrier stuff. Um, but it's actually uh, top to bottom here, right? So this will do one heat strip top to bottom, you know, bring power in. Once the uh, coil energizes, the switch closes and, and comes out here, uh, and likewise on the other side. So it's not left to right as we're looking at it here. It's actually top to bottom, bottom to top, however you want to say it, right? Uh, that's one style, but it's a DC voltage, not AC. Uh, another one, I've seen this in some uh, Goodman units as well. Um, this is also a DC relay. Um, comes from the Warren uh, company, um, but this, this is a... AC, so we got 24 volts AC coming in, and it rectifies it and makes it, uh, you know, 22 volts DC or so. Um, I think I've seen one as high as 30. But uh, basically, the principle is the same as this little board that uh, the carrier people use: um, AC power in to DC power. So where this where this particular one plugs into the relay is down here at these bottom two terminals. Uh, it's made, you can see the slot right here, it's made uh, to accept those little um, grooves so everything lines up just right. Um, and 24 volt connection here, AC, it'll turn it into DC. And then we have our high voltage switch, you know, from left to right. So that'll be these upper two um, that I'm pointing at right here. Power goes in, once we get a call for heat from the 24 volt side, turns it into DC and then out on the other side. So, uh, but it's, it's, it's a relay. It's, it's just like a, just like a contactor. It's just like a sequencer. Um, it's just like this other DC relay. Um, you know, it's just another style. So, uh, don't let it beat you up. Uh, but I had somebody, um, several people actually 
approached me and they're like, you know, what's the deal with it? So I actually sent a company an email just, you know, because I like answers that are better, uh, better than I told you so and, you know, do it uh, like I do it kind of deal, right? So uh, the email came back. Uh, basically, DC re uh, relays are more reliable than AC relays due to their pickup voltage, okay? Uh, you're going to have less issues with chattering for low voltage conditions. And, um, you know, in a nutshell, the DC relays seem to be more efficient. Um, not everybody has seen these. Not everybody, I mean, they're not hard to troubleshoot. I'll walk you through a couple things. But um, it's just another relay. It uses DC power, uh, like I said, straight from the engineering department to that company. Uh, it's it's a little more efficient, okay, uh, is basically what it boils down to. So it all opens and closes a switch to turn a heat strip on and off. So uh, it's not much other than that. So I've had people replace these DC relays with a 24-volt AC heat strip, or uh, excuse me, a heat sequencer. And I, I think that's a very common practice in the field. Uh, I'm not going to knock it. Uh, maybe we do lose some efficiency when we get rid of a DC uh, relay, but uh, realistically what happens in the field, I've already got a 24 volt system, so I'm pretty sure if I put a 24 volt contactor or a 24 volt uh, heat relay, heat sequencer, whatever you want to call it, I'm pretty sure it's going to work just fine. So uh, give me a second, I'm going to show you inside a real unit. We'll do a couple voltage checks and amp checks and um, we'll see how you like it. All right, let me show you this, right? I've got my ohm meter set up right here. Um, these, these DC relays are really no different than your contactor that's AC coil or your heat sequencer that's uh, powered by 24 volts AC. Um, this contactor, if I were to take my leads, set my meter to ohms, right? Set my meter to ohms, the omega sign, and I were to touch the two sides of that, um, that coil, you can see here I've got about, uh, you know, 10, 11 ohms. Um, that tells me that, uh, that this coil is continuous all the way through. It has 10 point ohm or 10.8 ohms of resistance. Um, sequencers, however, um, I don't know if you've ever taken one of these things apart. Their ohm values are a little bit different, okay? It says 35 ohms. Um, there's not really a true coil under there. If you take this thing apart um, by snapping those little silver braces off the side and actually pulling it apart, you can actually see the rods that go up and down, but there's a bimetal disc or two by metal discs down here, depending on how many heat strips you have. And um, it's not a true coil. We can treat it like a coil. I mean, you can ohm it out and be like, oh yeah, there's, there's some numbers there, but it's not, true, it's not a true coil like you have at the bottom of a contactor. Um, these DC relays though, the DC relays, if you were to pop that little rectifier off, I can check because they're, um, I can check the, the coil of this DC relay and look at that, 286, 87 ohms. There's actually a coil of wire like you would think of a, um, a traditional contactor. It's down there, okay? If I were to do uh, on um, this uh, DC relay for the Warren heater kit that we have, I can just, uh, I can ohm out down here at the bottom and, you know, we'll, we'll get an ohm reading here. This is not point oh or it's not point eight and um jesus if i ohm out this dc relay on the warren heat kit it's not point eight ohms it's point eight kilo ohms okay so we have to move the decimal place uh, uh over to the right a little bit right we're, we're talking about thousand ohms point eight seven three thousand ohms okay so there's there's a number there that's a lot bigger than what you would traditionally see on some of your um, your 24 volt AC components like your contactor or whatever or a transformer if you ohmed it out so um, but you can still ohm it out just like you would any other relay um, cut one open see what it looks like if you take that heat sequencer apart you're going to see it's not a traditional coil of wire down there so what I've got in this situation here um, we've got a Warren heat strip kit uh, heater kit however you want to call it uh, it's basically a 10 kW so I've got two 5k heat strips I've also got two of the DC relays that um, are used to control those heaters on and off um, because of the amp draw and the wire size requirements here um, what we've done uh, and it works out pretty good for examples we leave one heat strip wired up 
and we have the other one where we disconnected the wire from the relay and uh, the element and the safeties because we don't want to we don't want to turn on both we only need uh, to show one and the other one is left there you know off to the side for testing purposes and what have you okay so uh, this left side is all together everything works fine and the right side uh, is disconnected uh, I've pulled this um, this uh, DC relays um, Oh, rectifier, that's what it is. I pulled the rectifier off. I'll show you some voltage checks on it and, um, and walk you through a couple things. So I'm going to turn on the emergency heat. And uh, we'll verify that the heat strip is actually going to work. There we go. So it shouldn't take but just a second. Once the emergency heat kicks on, I hear it click. I've got 17 amps on my, uh, oh, I've got 17 amps on my uh, amp draw for that heater circuit. All right, I've got my meter set up in the corner. I've got my heaters unplugged from the rectifier. I'm waiting on it to go to emergency heat. Uh, I'm going to show you the AC voltage first. Try to catch it before the, uh, the fan kicks in. All right, there it goes. The thermostat just called for emergency heat. You can see 26 volts on it. I'm going to switch over and I'm going to show you what's coming out of that rectifier. All right, here we go. What I'm going to do, uh, I cut everything off just to get rid of some of the noise, right? But instead of, instead of using my regular leads, I'm going to uh, put some alligator clips on the ends, right? And I've got this, um, this rectifier removed from the actual relay. And all I'm going to do is clip my alligator clips on top of those... Um, those female terminals just like that and let you see if, if you don't have your meter set up right then it's it's going to show you something wrong okay so I know it's going to be DC I've got it set to AC right now and as soon as um, as soon as we hear the blower start to go all right so it it's only says 0.5 AC but it's really you know around 30 34 volts DC that's what I've got right now. That's probably a little bit high because I don't actually have it going uh, to the actual coil. But if you have it set on AC, it ain't going to show you right. So don't think that you're missing voltage. All right, here's another one. Um, with this relay on the right, uh, we're going to leave the 24 volt uh, AC to DC rectifier hooked up to it. But if you wanted to check continuity to see if you if you had a heat strip that wasn't coming on and uh, you wanted to test the switch on the actual uh, heat relay itself, um, all you'd have to do is disconnect all the high voltage. So we've got just our 24 volt AC going in. Of course, it's going to change to DC. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my uh, meter on continuity. Um, and then I'm going to turn my heat strips back on and what I'll do here is I'll leave I'll leave my leads in place and then once the coil engages we should get our continuity tone on our actual meter and uh, that'll let us know that um, that that switch actually closed or not of course once we get voltage to the coil it should beep and give us a continuity um, if it doesn't, then of course, you know, it's a bad relay. And there it goes. Took about a minute for it to kick on, but uh, you can see we have zero ohms. Uh, we've got a continuity tone. That relay is doing what it's supposed to. All right, one more thing. Um, we've, we've replaced uh, in, our, in our lab here, we've replaced these DC relays that have failed um, or accidentally got uh, broken we'll say uh, somebody hooked up the wrong power to it or, or whatever um, but um, I think a lot of guys out in the field when they come across something like this and they know it's a DC relay I I've never worked for a company that had these on the van you either had to go back into town and get them or make something else work so uh, I think a lot of guys out in the field they'll take that DC heat relay and they'll put a contactor in its place or a um, a sequencer in its place uh, but one thing that these DC relays have that the uh, contactor coil and the sequencer don't have is a uh, 3 16 female connection 
Um, these ends, right? These ends on the um, going into that rectifier are three sixteenths, not a quarter inch. Okay. So what winds up happening is uh, the guys are going to have to do some some wiring uh, to to make it work okay you're not going to make that fit on a contactor coil or a uh, sequencer or anything like that okay so what i'm going to tell you is uh make it look good okay you can take because you're going to need a quarter inch connection in, in order to put that sequencer there so what i would do is i would leave that plug there don't cut the end of that wire I would come back six or so inches toward the plug and uh, I would cut it here and uh, I'm going to basically make my connections further back than the original plug okay once you take those C uh, DC relays loose um, I would I would leave the plug there and give myself enough room that I can go in all right and this is just me I would go in on the wire that uh, that I'm going to connect to the actual the new replacement component the contactor or heat uh, sequencer and I would put insulated terminals on the end okay so uh, I've got a set of these I've got a male and a female and I, I put them together in pairs okay and I'm gonna put even on the original plug I'm gonna I'm going to leave that in case uh, it's just a temporary fix and I want to go back with the original DC relays. I don't want to hack up the end with the 3 16 terminals. Leave those there, but come back, you know, six or so inches, uh, whatever you have room for, and you're going to make a, a disconnect uh, point there so I can still use this new quarter inch end for a contactor, uh, heat sequence, or what have you. But if anybody ever put the original DC relays back in there I can go back with that original plug and I'm not missing anything I don't need another wiring harness so uh, hang tight I'm gonna put these together and show you how that would look all right what I would do is put the um, I put the male and the female together already okay and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the female on the side away from the actual relay. All right. So I'm going to put that there and I'm going to crimp it down. So my purple wire is done. Okay. And then I would go in here and do the same thing on this other purple side. And then wash, rinse, repeat with the the orange side. Okay. Make sure you trim it long enough, but short enough. You don't want all the extra wire hanging there. Uh, you want to make sure that the end of the wire, the insulation covering it, is within that insulated terminal. You don't want to have exposed copper, you know, an inch back. Um, just doesn't work. Okay. So before I take out the DC relay, I make it look like that. Okay. And I can break loose. I have a male end on my DC relay side and I have two female ends now on my 24 volt uh, wire coming, uh, you know, from the, the plug and everything. And I can plug this directly onto the new sequencer or whatnot. So if I ever went back, all I had to do was simply connect back in. And uh, now I can uh, reuse those 3 16 inch factory connections that were on the DC relay. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of, of where we've done this before. Leave the plug in there. Don't take it and throw it away. All right. Leave it there for the next guy. Hey, here's an example of one. Um, you can see that we have our orange and purple wires again and we put a sequencer in place of this one. We've got our purple wire going to our 24 volt common, our orange wire going for our 24 volt hot back there. Um, works fine. It's just a sequencer now instead of the original carrier relay that had that uh, 
that little rectifier board Here's on one, top of the relay. Purple and orange again, right? Uh, we've put a contactor in place of this one. So uh, this one works fine. This is a 5KW uh, heater kit, but um, it works just fine. We're just using the AC voltage instead of the DC voltage to do our control work. So uh, just a couple examples. Hopefully uh, you understand that it's just a relay. It's nothing hard, um, but they do use DC voltages uh, for some relays, uh, DC components, just because of the, uh, the reliability. So um, hope it makes sense to you. If you got any questions, let me know.